You're listening to the Tiny D4 version of this Talking Nerdy episode with Chris and Frank. To get access to the unedited D20 version, go to patreon.com forward slash nerdpreneur and become a member of the Awesome Nerdpreneur Board. Now enjoy the episode. Talking Nerdy. We're just talking nerdy. With all this talking nerdy. Oh. Chris, we just entered 2023. It's the first full week of January. And I don't know about you. Did you, did you, do you do resolutions? New yeah, Year's resolutions? I, I do in a weird way. I mean, I think every year there is a powerful tradition in taking a step back, looking at life and setting new intentions for the next year. Um, you know, New Year's resolutions is such a, a hot topic in some ways because people like that means so many different things to different people. Some people is like, oh, that's just uh, something you commit to for January and then it's over. Um, <laughs> and then yeah. there's things that uh, there's people who really do take like a whole week or a whole weekend or a day even out of their out of their holidays and focus just on setting goals. Like John Maxwell, I believe he takes a full day or two days or something like that and looks over the year does a full reflection on what happened what he achieved what it was that was working and then really spends time vision uh building what he wants to create in the next year and so uh i i I know there's a gamut of of perspectives (laughs) on how these new these things called new year's resolutions can really become uh or what they are right yeah i i have taken some time in the year in the in the past i've taken some time to put it down and write down kind of like like you said a vision board but this year not so much i've decided that i'm kind of taking a step back from the, some of the resolutions um but i did think it was really interesting that it's a good time for us to talk about in a sense of starting up an entrepreneurial venture it's a really good time for us you and I, to talk about how we and others can commit to what they set their sights on. Because the classic trope is that when people set their sights on a New Year's resolution, they only stick to it for a month at most. And and like the other, like, there's only 10% of the people that actually stick with it through the entire year. But that's just life. That's just like, life is pyramidal that way, right? I mean, there are... There, there just are, are fewer, like whenever you set out to do anything, there tends to be a very, very narrow margin of people at the very top who actually achieve at that level or do anything to that level. And there are tactics and there are tricks and things that actually get the people to do that. But um, I do think that to expect differently or to say that, oh, it doesn't work because the vast majority of people it doesn't work for, um, is not a smart way to live. I think you want to live the way of the people who maybe are doing a lot in a year or setting their intentions and all this other stuff that that we're going to talk about. Yeah. And mindset, what you just touched on, I think is super important. And I think we'll go into more detail of what that mindset can look like. Yeah. uh, At least as far as the things that I wanted to bring up. But would you like to go ahead and kick us off with the first one or, or two or three? Well, Not sure so, how many points you had. But. Well, what are we actually talking about? Like, are we talking about our New Year's resolutions? Or are we talking about how to stay committed to, to New Year's ah, resolutions? Like, let's let's yeah. really be clear on what we're talking about today because New Year's yes. resolutions is a big topic, and we're not just talking about setting goals. You know, and this is really uh, intended, I think, to be evergreen because the idea of saying, I want to get something done, I want to create something, I want to become a different version of myself in X amount of time, that doesn't have to be done at New Year's. It's just the time that everybody starts thinking about it again or yeah. feels the obligation to think about it, um, which is why I think there's so much, uh, uh, I don't know the right word, but why a lot of people don't take it seriously at this time of year. So uh, what are we talking about, Frank? How do you, how do you see this yeah. conversation? Yeah, I specifically want us to talk about how people can stay committed to what they start beyond just the beginning. And it hap- like you said, it happens to tie in really well with New Year's, but there's plenty of other times someone wants to start a business venture and they go for a little bit and then they tire out or they lose steam or they lose hope um, and how they can stick in it past those initial road bumps is what I want us to talk about. 
Well, I'd love to I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because I believe that I have thoughts on this and I have a lot of opinions on it and I also have some really strong ideas that I think will be game changing, mm-hmm. but they are not intuitive. And so what that means is that the people who are listening, you might hear me talk about a few things and I might talk about goal setting and the way in which to achieve your goals in a very different way than you've heard many other people talk about it and that's because i've seen it work and it actually is a different uh, mentality is a different way of achieving um but i don't think it'll be if i start i think it might undermine some of the things you say which can be still valuable so i don't if i start then you'll undermine it later on (laughs) exactly that's the way i like to have these conversations i like to get frank a chance to go out there before i start cutting everything he says down no i'm i'm I'm, i know (laughs) i I know somewhat what he's gonna say you want me to build the garden before you go in with the weed whacker (laughs) yeah well i just believe that there's like i think you're gonna say a lot of things that are valuable and a lot of the the world i think will will hear and say yeah i've heard that before but Mm. I want to, and the funny thing is, is everything we talk about will, will not have been, uh, is, is, is what you've heard before, right? Like success is not actually that unique. There's not a lot of secrets to it. Most of it's the same stuff that's been said about success forever. However, a lot of people will have probably heard you what you're going to say in a similar way before, but they may not um, have heard exactly what I'm going to say about that too. And how, and I think it'll build upon what you're saying so that those techniques and tactics, there's no point in me talking will actually anymore. say this. There is there's, absolutely no, there's no point. You've just said, Frank, whatever you say, people will have heard it before, but what I'm going to say, that's the real kicker. And no one will have heard that before. So Frank might as well just like pass the buck to you, Chris. No, no, no. I really think that we want to hear like, I, okay, I, I'm curious because this is a discussion and you might fight me on some of these things. You might disagree, but I believe that I will have a differing opinion in some ways to uh, the way I think about this. And you know what? I don't think it'll undermine it. I think it'll only go deeper and help you and everybody else as well. I hear what you're saying. And the way I Without knowing what you're going to say, I don't know if you know what I'm going to say, but without knowing it, I think that ultimately what we're going to say is going to be good for different people. Different types of people will benefit from what you say. And then the other, there are other types of people and some overlap, I'm sure will understand and benefit from what I'm going to say. So I think, I think it just will take different approaches as we tend to. So I'll go ahead and jump in with what I was going to say. I've got three main things and I can summarize them pretty quick, but of course, you know, feel free to jump in and let me know what you think and if you think I'm wrong, but it's, there's a pretty simple kind of theme to it. And I think it really helps us because it's, it's, it's nice that it's simple because it makes it easy to really grasp and uh, see how one can do it for themselves. So I'm going to kind of use the, since it's, you know, the new year's just kicked off, I'm going to use the example of a new year's resolution. But of course this can apply to anything like we've already said, you know, someone's entrepreneurial ventures, someone's uh, weight loss or gym habits or, you know, general health, or it could be so many other things. And for me, it's reading. And so mm-hmm. the example I use is I last year had the goal of reading 3000 pages a year. And I say pages because novels vary. So novels and books in general vary so much in size that I, I measure by pages now instead of books. So the first thing that someone wants to do if they have a goal or a resolution of some kind is to identify why that goal is important. And yeah, this probably sounds familiar to folks. If you understand the why though, it's going to be really helpful for you when you hit roadblocks or you start to tire out. That good idea of why I'm doing this is going to help you stick with it. For me, reading is super important because I like to grow. I like to learn. And I also really enjoy that satisfaction of finishing a book. You know, you close the back end cover and then you're like, ah, yes, I did it. So the big thing is when you have a goal, get as detailed as you can with why you're doing it. And the more detailed you get, the more power, the more motivation you're going to have as you push through those roadblocks that pop up in life, because that's what life is all about, is uh, giving you struggles to overcome. 
I, be I believe that the why behind something is is absolutely important. So I don't want to undermine anything Frank just said there, um, <laughs> because it is. It's like that is a fundamental key to goal setting, New Year's resolutions, achievement, all of those things. You have to have a strong why. Um, and I will applaud you also on the 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 uh, the three thousand pages. Uh, you know, I think that that reading books, they say, I don't know who they is, but they say that the two things that will determine where you are in life in the next decade is the people you spend time with and the books you read. Mm. And so if you're not reading at all, uh, that's a whole level of not getting to where you want to go or potentially could get to. So I think reading is, uh, is something that we can all get behind. And if you don't have a reading goal, go get a reading goal for this year. Uh, you know, I do 10 pages a day as opposed to say 3,000. Sounds like a lot and maybe it's harder, but I just do like, you know, 10 pages a day. An average of that over a week. I don't read every single day. Sometimes I read 20 pages on one day, then right. no pages the next day, right? But I try to average 70 pages a week is kind of my my plan. You know, that was just such a beautiful segue. You were starting to talk about the how you would uh, do something, which is exactly the next thing that I'm going to talk about, which is in order to push through and stick to your goals and your resolutions, understand the how. Once you get the why and you have your motivation, the how is the framework, the plan, the blueprint to get to that goal. And how you do that can take many different shapes. Um, I totally get that some people might not even know where to begin. They say, I want to start a business, but they have no idea where to begin. So the first step really in that case is absorb information, learn from the pros, learn from people you admire and aspire to be like. See how they do it, the tips, the tricks, the suggestions. That is the best place to start if you don't know where to start. And I personally, for example, in my day job, I had to learn how to start a um, product video business from the ground up. And fortunately, there are a lot of people on YouTube who talk about a variety of things. So going to people who are already doing it and putting out content around it is a great place to start. Now, for my example, 3,000 pages. I broke it down to 3,000 divided by 356, or no, 365, and numerically dyslexic, and 365 days, and that's roughly 58 pages a week. So if I can hit my goal of 58 pages a week, then I'm on track. And of course, like you said, it's going to vary. It's going to vary. Some days and some weeks, I won't read that much. So getting a good idea of how something is going to be done is going to be super helpful. And then the, the the thing on top of that, kind of the cherry on top of that point, is once you have a good idea of how you will do it and you've laid down those stones on your path, then you will know what they are, what they are that you're going to do and where they fit into your existing routine, your existing daily, weekly routine. Because once you can integrate it into what you already do, more the more likely it is to become a permanent habit and to stick with you. And that's something I heard in uh, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. I don't think I'm saying his name quite right, but Charles Duhigg, The Power of Habit, he talks about how it'll be easier to fit already existing routines, fit, fit steps into your already existing routines because you can see where it'll work and where it'll fit. Mm -hmm. So for I me, for example, I read before I go to work and I read before bed and that's, that fits into my daily routine. And do you find that like, because I, I think there are many people out there that have probably set those intentions before around like, well, I'm going to read a book this year or this month. And they just, they say, I'm going to do it in the morning and every night. And then, you know, the morning they wake up late by accident and then that just right. doesn't work out or like, oh crap, I, I have to be at work early and I'm tired or like, oh, I finished this book. So this book now I don't, I haven't, I have to buy another book and I haven't had time to go buy another book. Like there's always things that pop up, right? Yes. Or it's, it's right before bed and then like, oh man, I don't want to read while I'm drunk, right? Like people have been drinking or like, oh, I don't want to read while I'm, uh, you know, uh, got somebody in bed with me, right? Or they're sure. going to bed so I can't turn on the light right now. So, if, you know, there's, there's the, it, you know, it's funny because just these little things that, that become, like I say, mosquitoes on your goals that just suck the blood out of them and mm. stop them from actually getting done. And these little tiny mosquitoes come around all the time when you have these habits that you try to put into your day, right? How do you handle that with, uh, with the, that being your, your yeah. understanding of a how? 
That's a that's a great point and ties back to the first point, which is the why. If you understand what your why is and is detailed, your motivation is clear, then you can push through those. You'll see those as small roadblocks and you'll push through them. But for me, uh, a, a journey, a struggle for myself has been what's the word? It's it's being kind to myself if I don't stick to my routine, recognizing that okay. I didn't read this morning. I woke up late, like you said, or I didn't read at night because I was just too tired or whatever the reason is. Sometimes I'm not going to make a perfect day out of my perfect routine. It's not going to happen. So I have to be okay, forgive myself, move on. Next day is a new day and understand that that is not enough of a reason for me to give up just because I missed it a day or two, three days in a row. I'm going to get back on the bandwagon. I'm going to push through. And there's other days that I can catch up with my example goal of reading. So, yeah. I think that there's, and this might be moving a little bit into my um, side of things too around this, because this is like the why tends to be, I think, fairly easy for a lot of people. Like, I want to make more money. Why? So I can buy more things and have more yeah. freedom. or So I don't have this stress anymore, right? Or uh, I want to read a book. Why? So I'm smarter and I'm more ach achieved and I feel better about myself. Although, like, the why is kind of easy a lot of times for people. And I think a lot of people get to that first point. But the how? They say, okay, it's just as simple as doing 10 pages a day or reading every morning and night or just doing a little bit every day. But there's so much opportunity for failure um, when we have these daily activities. And I, I think that it does stop people from getting into uh, the rhythm or the habit or all those kind of kind of things and stop people from getting to their goals. And I guess the, I think that there is a, there is a real power in some ways to being a bit of a dick about your goals. Yeah, what do you mean by that? I mean that you kind of have to be willing to not care what other people think, especially yourself, and focus just only on the action. So if reading 10 pages a day is your say, commitment, right, then you have to do it, right? The The mentality can't be, I should be doing this. It has to be a must. And that means that at some point, you will have to tell someone around you like, hey, I'm not coming to bed right now because I haven't done my 10 pages. You go to bed, leave me alone for 30 minutes. I will be there in 10 minutes or when I've done my 10 pages. And you kind of have to be a dick about it and that that comes before that other person, for example. But it also means like for yourself, when you're when you're like, oh, I'm kind of tired, or I'm ha or I'm or I'm hungover, or if, I don't know why I keep using drunk and hungover, but I feel like they're yeah. very real. Like I feel like a lot of times we make decisions at night that really affect us in the morning. And to me, um, doing things in the morning, you kind of have to be a bit of a dick to yourself at that time to be like, it, you did this to yourself. You have to get up and go running. You have to go out and do this. And when you move past that point of discomfort, because you're willing to be a bit of a dick about your goals, that that thing matters than everything else. Like, I'm going to say no to my job because I need to rent, read 10 pages. Do you know what Ooh. I'm saying? Like, I'm going to say That'd no to uh, this other, like, am I willing to give up you know, 30 minutes with my friends because I haven't done my 10 pages and I know if I don't do it now, I'm out before midnight. Like it, it really is that level of con conversation with yourself and the, and the fear around a lot of those conversations is, well, my friends might not like me as much because I'm not there right on time or, yeah. um, you know, well, my boss or my, my, my work might fall apart because I don't do this thing right at this time. You know, do, and these are the conversations you have with yourself. And I think if you really, really want to be committed to a goal, 99%, uh, when, I, when I define the word commitment, 99% does not work. Do you understand? Like, like, yeah, you, like you if, need to hit that 100. Like if, you're, if your uh, fiance says, well, I'm 99% committed to you. Is that enough? Right? Like <laughs> you're touching that... on a very interesting um, thing that I struggle with because so you and I often talk about how mainstream hustle culture is a dangerous, toxic thing, 
right? Mm -hmm. But also, you and I are also talking about how hustling is important. And it's this fine line that we haven't really dove into that I really want to briefly just say, like, you are talking about the very, like, it's kind of a hardcore hustle. And it's borderline hustle culture. And mm -hmm. I don't know how you would differentiate it from the, you know, the mainstream, but you're talking about this, like, sacrifice whatever needs to be done to meet your goal, that 100% commitment, anything less than that is failure. Like, that's what you're saying. And I get that. And I used to believe that in my core, but I was so hard on myself that I had to, through therapy, realize that I needed to give myself some forgiveness and some flexibility. Even though I was still holding myself accountable, I had to accept that, okay, today, if I pushed myself, I would not be mentally well today or the next day. So I have to be okay with letting it slide today. Now, that is definitely, I know, going to hold me back from succeeding from as much as someone that follows your mentality, like you were saying. That's only one way to look at it. Like the way I look at it is not necessarily as I'm beating myself up because if I don't do something, I'm not talking to myself in a negative way. I'm not saying like, oh, Chris, you're a piece of shit for not doing this and this is awful and you shouldn't even, you know, you don't even deserve this because you didn't wake up at, you know, 7 a.m. to read your 10 pages. Like <laughs> if, that, if that's the conversation you're having in your head, um, yeah, you got to do some therapy to, because that's not your voice. That's a father's voice. That's a mm, mother's voice. Right. That's a teacher's voice. That's someone else's voice that was implanted in you when you were a child, uh, you as in the general you, maybe not Frank, but just like the general you that I'm talking about. If you have those voices, you need to do some sort of work to take a look at the child within you, give them a hug and say, hey, it's okay. You're not worthless for not achieving your goals because that's true. Like you are not worthless if you don't achieve your goals or you don't uh, set, uh, set yourself down, but you are out of integrity. And this is where I think my difference for a lot of uh, what we're going to talk about today or what we're talking about is in how you view yourself makes the biggest difference in who you become. So if you want to achieve something different this year in 2023, I actually don't think you should set goals based on like, oh, I want to do this, like make more money or um, $100,000 more than I made last year. Um, you know, I don't want to, uh, I, I'm going to lose, you know, 45 pounds. Great. You can have specific goals like that, but I don't think that's actually going to make much of a difference. The only time people tend to actually change their behaviors tends to be when they stop seeing themselves as the person who used to do that thing and they change their perception of who they are now to be the person who's doing the new thing. So your identity needs to align in your goal setting. So for me, the first most powerful way to start achieving your goals and stay committed to them is become a person of integrity and start seeing yourself as a person of integrity. So, okay, hold on. I, I love it. And, uh, okay. So can, you use the can word we in define integrity, maybe. <laughs> yes, exactly. Cause integrity <laughs> is one of those wibbly wobbly words out there yes. that sounds great, but it can mean something so different for each person. Integrity really means, in my mind, is you are in alignment with your value system or you are in integrity with yourself. So, um, and in simpler say, it's like you do what you say you're going to do, right? So that's a simpler way to say it. it's not quite perfect, I think, but it's a way for people to at least get their, their, their brain into what I'm talking about. Because if you say, I am a person of integrity, which means that I do what I say I'm going to do. If I say I'm going to be somewhere at this time, I will do everything in my power to get to that place at that time. And if I am late, I am out of integrity, but then I must communicate to those people to get back into integrity that I'm going to be late. So yeah. it's not that, oh my gosh, things happen, traffic, I got in a car accident, I'm, not, I'm, I'm a piece of shit because I'm not in integrity. That's not what it is. It's integrity is a function of communication and remaining in integrity with the people and yourself. So if you say something to yourself and you don't actually do it, you do a lot of damage to your own perceived uh, integrity within, which hurts your ability 
in the future to continue being in integrity with any of your goals. And I think a lot of people get into this very specific habit of setting a goal, not really being that committed to it, or they start off really excited, but when it gets hard or there's challenges or these mosquitoes come in and, and stop you, then they start saying, well, now I'm, I'm out of integrity. And they start saying to themselves, or they start um, being that person who's out of integrity and they get into a sliding habit of being that person who's out of integrity and comfortable with it. And the first step is to actually eliminate that and identify yourself, bring your identity into alignment around saying, I am a person of in integrity at all times. And if you do that, you can actually start to achieve anything. Anything that you identify yourself with. Yeah. That, that point of identifying yourself is really nice. Um, I've heard that somebody somewhere else as well. And I, and it really kind of broke my mind in a good way about, okay, if I identify myself as someone, for example, my day job, I felt like an imposter for a while, my day job making product videos. And then once I started to say, you know, if this is my job and I would tell people I make product videos, I make product videos, product videos. And after a while I realized I actually do this and I actually do it pretty well. People like what I make. Wow. Okay. This is me. I do this. And yeah, it, it definitely was a great way to, uh, uh, stick to that change. Yeah. And, and grounding this in examples too, is, and for myself, I, you know, would struggle with regular working out, you know, I would do things that were fun and active. So I was never like really out of shape or fat or anything, but I was never really fit for a while. Um, and then what happened was, the shift in mentality to, you know, I am a healthy, fit person versus, you know, I'm someone who's trying to go to the gym four times a week, right? So it's a very different thing when you say I am a healthy and fit person. This gives you many times the, the strength because we know this in sales, right? We know this, that what we say, we want to align to, right? If we say I am a person who uh, considers themselves healthy and fit, which means I eat healthy food and I work out and I'm active and I, health is an important part of my existence. Well, then I am way more susceptible to buy health food and gym memberships because of that. Right. And yeah. so when you're in the sales situation, they will ask you questions like that along the way so that they can then align your, uh, your, your credit card to your identity and they will get your money from you. But the, the, but most people are not in integrity there. They're just saying that because they, they believe that that's the right thing to say. And then they wind up buying the products. But when you really make the effort to say like, I am surrendering to the fact that as a healthy person, you know, I do these things and it's not just because I'm doing it for a month or a week or this year. It's because this is who I am forever. Then going to the gym four times a week is a lot easier mm -hmm. because it's not something that you're trying to just sort of work with discipline and willpower. It's really becoming part of who you are. And there's a, and I think that, that aligning your value system um, in a way to, to, to give you the ability to make more powerful decisions is actually a big key to sticking to your goals. Thank you for listening to this D4 version of the Talking Nerdy episode. For a full D20 version of this episode, go to patreon.com forward slash nerdpreneur and become a member of the Awesome, awesome Nerdpreneur Board. Board members get access to full versions of every Nerdpreneur interview and Talking Nerdy episode, and we love them. If you like what you heard in this episode and you know someone who might benefit from the information, send it over to them. The only way we grow is through awesome people like you telling their friends. Thanks again for listening, and as always, keep it nerdy.